Hi, thank you for your questions. I will uh, give my best to, to give you the, the answers you expect. You recently partnered with Tencent. Can you explain a little more about what that means for Ubisoft in China? It is a very important um, thing for us in China because it's going to give a chance to all the games we create to be present on the Chinese market. And uh, many of our Chinese employees uh, would love to see those brands successful in China. Uh, because when you work on a, on a brand, you want it to be also played by your friends. So for us, it's a good way to, to make those brands known on a worldwide basis and uh, to grow in China, which is very quickly going to be the second market and maybe one day the first market in the world. Will uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2 be Ubisoft's biggest project ever? I, I really hope so. I think uh, that team has the capacity to, to create the best game on the planet. Uh, so if, they, if we take the time and the energy, we can have something that will be uh, the best game ever done. Is there any news around a new Splinter Cell uh, game? We, I heard that question a lot during E3. Um, we, we don't have something to announce at the moment, uh, but we heard uh, loud and clear that you like that brand. This week, you made headlines about your quote about console cycles. Could you tell us a little more? Uh, yes, actually, uh, what I said is that maybe the, the next cycle of console will happen, but that there will not be another one. Uh, what we are dreaming at is that technology will allow uh, us to actually stream our games to all the, the TVs, uh, mobile phones and tablets uh, in the future and that uh, we will be able to give an opportunity to all our brands to reach 2.5 billion players in, uh, in five years and maybe 5 billion players in, uh, in 10 years. Uh, so we are very excited about that new opportunity and the other thing is also to be able to use uh, big forms of servers to create games that uh, we couldn't dream of creating before. It's been a huge year for Ubisoft in so many ways. Has E3 felt any different than those in over the past couple of years? E3 has been a fantastic E3 again this year. Uh, the response from uh, all the games uh, we presented was uh, fantastic. We, we are so happy we get uh, feedback from all the players all over the world so that when we come to E3, we can come with um, games that fit really with uh, what they expect. This is the second year in a row that Ubisoft highlighted a collaboration with Nintendo. In the introduction of Star Fox to Starlink, uh, why is Ubisoft's relationship with Nintendo so strong and will these types of collaboration continue? So it is very strong because we, um, we have done many things together in the past and um, the, the Nintendo brands and their capacity to create fantastic games is really something that our uh, creators in Ubisoft love and um, when they can collaborate with Nintendo, they are extremely uh, happy to do so. So yes, it will continue, and I hope we will be able to surprise you with uh, new things in the future. How does uh, this year's E3 lineup reflect Ubisoft's current vision? I think it's, uh, it's a good um, reflection of what we like to create. All the games that were presented uh, are really in the vein of what we want to achieve. Um, <clears throat> so it's a good, it's a good reflection of uh, where we are today and we hope to continue to, to surprise you in the future. Ubisoft players uh, centric approach isn't just about feedback from players but also trying to get them involved in game development. Why is it important for Ubisoft? In fact the more um, we are the better the experience will be. So, in having the possibility to take your feedback and to give you a chance to um, create content uh, with the tools we, we create 
is a good opportunity for all the players to have uh, more diverse experiences and better games. What is the next step in integrating players' feedback in games? Does Ubisoft ultimately want to put more tools in players' hands? So yes, the best way to give you a chance to participate in our games is to give you tools that are well polished and that give you a chance to create uh, modes, create maps, um, to, to, to intervene a lot in our games. This year we saw Rainbow Six Siege and For Honor in Ubisoft press conference. What is the future of live games? I think the future of live games is bright. Uh, if we can continue to give content um, that is linked to your feedback, I think we can continue to build those experiences to a point that uh, they become the best experiences in the video game industry. So that's our goal today. So continue to give us feedback so that we can improve uh, the experience and especially make it fit to what you want. In the area of live games, how does Ubisoft determine when it's time to move on to a full-fledged sequel. It's, it's actually a conversation that we have with uh, lots of the, the fans uh, and also your behavior in the game. If we feel that the technology we created to, for the first game uh, is not giving us a chance to, to give you everything you want, uh, we think it's time to go to the next uh, level. So, rebuild the engine so that we can um, answer all your needs. What does the future hold for Ubisoft? What do you think is going to be the next technical breakthrough? I think uh, the next big thing is going to be uh, the capacity to, to stream our games to uh, more, um, more screens and the ability to use all the farms of servers that uh, will be in uh, data centers so that we can, the ultimate, we can create the ultimate game, which is uh, a game that will be um, very alive, responsive to uh, all the actions you do in, in it, remembering what you have done and uh, anticipating your needs. Thank you for your questions. Um, I couldn't answer all of them, but I hope that the answers I gave to the ones I could pick up um, uh, will satisfy you. So I hope you had also a great history. It was a fantastic one for me.